So good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for coming. Um, I'll just make a, a brief presentation. Um, and of course, then after that, uh, the floor will be open for questions. I'll try to answer them. Um, hopefully, I've been suggested to answer to in the language that it is uh, uh, asked. Uh, please, no Japanese or Arab <laughs> official WTO languages. So um, thank you very much for coming. And just a reminder uh, that I would like to uh, start out with, which is the fact that um, the appointment process is on the way. It hasn't finished yet. So on the 14th, uh, we will have a, um, uh, a meeting of the General Council when the General Council will uh, hopefully uh, accept uh, the recommendation of the Troika. And at that point in time, then uh, we would be waiting until um, September when um, the, the next DG, um, hopefully me, uh, will take office. Um, so I, I should start with uh, words of thanks. Um, I clearly, uh, starting with uh, Brazil, I have to express my word of gratitude to the Brazilian government, um, uh, President uh, of the Republic, um, uh, Dilma Rousseff, uh, the Minister for Foreign Relations, Antonio Patriot, all the other ministers, uh, diplomats, colleagues, uh, representatives that helped uh, uh, work in this campaign. Uh, this is absolutely critical that they did uh, all that, otherwise we wouldn't be here uh, today. Um, also to friends and partners in the private sector uh, and in civil society. That's also um, a very important part of, uh, of, of, of our effort. Uh, outside Brazil, 158 countries and their representatives in Geneva that worked uh, really hard to have a constructive um, and active process, which is extremely uh, important to me to have, uh, at the end of the day, the support of all 158. Otherwise, uh, we would be at an impasse uh, right now. Um, let me also uh, thank uh, the other eight candidates. Um, given their skills, expertise, uh, and level of professional uh, uh, experience that they were bringing to the scene, that meant that we would have a high quality DG no matter the outcome. Uh, and that is extremely important. I'm, a, I, I, I'm very Thankful for all of them to, to have participated um, in this process and, and offer the WTO the chance to have um, uh, such a, a selection of candidates uh, to choose from. Uh, let me also thank the Troika, uh, Ambassadors um, Bashir from Pakistan, um, Freed from Canada, and, uh, and uh, Reitner from Sweden. Um, impeccable job on their part. Um, which is being recognized, of course, by the whole membership. Um, we come to this moment uh, where the WTO is in a very critical stage. Uh, we often say that, but this is really true. We are at a critical stage. Um, the negotiating pillar of the WTO is completely stuck. Uh, there is a clear paralysis in the system because the negotiations are not only uh, avoiding the disciplines from, from being updated and closing the gap between the rules of the organization and the real world of the, um, that where businesses operate, um, we have a trade agenda that we have to broaden and, um, and tackle. Uh, there are a large number of trade-related uh, areas and issues that need to be evaluated, discussed at the WTO. We are not doing that, and that's extremely uh, worrisome. Uh, and we need to change this situation as quickly as, it, as we can. In my view, the way to do it is to ensure that the negotiations move and move as soon as we can. Um, the multilateral trading system was created to be a forum for negotiations and discussion. We cannot allow the system not to function in these two areas. Um, we all know that uh, multilateral negotiations rarely are at the frontier of trade liberalization. It, they're rarely uh, groundbreaking negotiations. They set the foundation on which the groundbreaking negotiations actually happen. And those are normally in uh, bilateral agreements, regional agreements, and that's normal. That's the way it has always been for more than half a century. 
Now, the problem we have today is that the multilateral trading system is not operating in parallel. That's the problem we have, and that's what we need to solve. Now, either the foundation on which these uh, regional agreements, all these um, uh, uh, bilateral agreements um, are built upon, either this foundation moves, either this foundation is updated, or the world will move on and the WTO will be left behind. And I think that's what we need to avoid at this point in time. Why? Because the multilateral trading system is a common good of all countries. All countries, regardless of size, regardless of geographical circumstances, regardless of the uh, level of development, they need this system. They need the multilateral trading system as something that will allow uh, trade to happen on a level playing field in a way which is predictable, in a way which is fair for all countries that participate in international trade. We have played a very significant role, and I say we, I say the WTO has played a very significant role since the, since the crisis emerged in 2008. Uh, protectionist trends emerged, they emerged firmly, they emerged decidedly, and that risk, those trends are still there, they're still with us, and we need to fight them. They are threatening, they are threatening to all countries, and particularly to the smallest and poorest of them, the most vulnerable ones. Um, we are, in my view, on the verge of losing a very valuable system, a system that we all fought for and that we struggled to create and to advance. As we approach now the Bali Ministerial, we have a chance to take a first step towards the rescuing of this system. We must do our very best to ensure that Bali not only delivers uh, significant outcomes, substantive outcomes, but it also delivers and instills a sense of confidence, confidence that we can still negotiate, that we can still engage constructively, looking forward and trying to find meaningful results. At this point in time, it should not be about getting what we want. It should be about saving what we have. The only way to do it is to look forward, roll up our sleeves, sit down at the table together in a solution-finding mode and try to move forward. The selection process of the DG, in my view, has set firmly the first pillar of the bridge that we need to move the WTO from where we are today to an organization that is again meaningful, that again delivers uh, negotiated outcomes that, um, that the world uh, hopes uh, and expects from us. Um, throughout this process, uh, members have expressed their views about their preferences, about who they wanted as their DG. These views obviously were different from each other and they couldn't be otherwise. Uh, but what I believe was the most important in all this process is that every single member, every one of the 158 members stated unequivocally that they were willing to work with the next DD, whoever he or she was, in order to find solutions and to make the system functional and operational again. That, I think, is the most positive part. I think today we had uh, um, the agreement, a formal agreement of members to accept the recommendation of the Troika. I hope that on the 14th we have, uh, um, uh, again, a consensus that leads towards the, the, the end of this selection process so that by September, when we have the transition from the current DG to the next one, we will have an organization which is united. Um, I don't believe in north-south divides in the WTO. Things are very rarely that simple. What I do hope is that north, south, east, west, whatever we are, whatever we come from, we work together and try to get deliverables in Bali and that we can um, uh, set the stage for a productive work uh, that will 
that will come afterwards. Uh, this is just the beginning of the road. This is a very long road that we had ahead of us. So these are just the uh, initial comments. I'm sure you have uh, intriguing questions to make. So I'll try to tackle them as they come. Thank you very much. Catherine Fiancan-Bokonga pour France 24. Je vous pose la question en français. Si J'essaie de répondre en français. J'espère que ça va marcher. Merci. <rire> euh, vous venez de dire que vous souhaitez que la ministérielle de Bali soit le premier euh, pas euh, vers un déblocage euh, de la situation. Est-ce que vous pourriez nous donner un peu plus de détails sur ce que vous souhaiteriez euh, voir euh, lors de la réunion de Bali Merci. Bon, on travaille déjà dans au moins trois piliers dans la ministérielle du Bali. Nous avons quelques thèmes d'agriculture. De de, de, Nous avons aussi la facilitation du commerce, que c'est un pilier très important. C'est très, très grand euh, 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 coverage, euh, une couverture euh, de, de thèmes et de, et de matières. Donc, je pense que euh, aussi le, le pilier de développement. Il y a plusieurs euh, thèmes de développement que les pays euh, moins avancés sont en train de présenter. Euh, les discussions marchent, marchent bien, euh, mais il y a beaucoup de risques. Il y a beaucoup de risques. Euh, je pense qu'on ne peut pas euh, perdre euh, une minute. Euh, il faut travailler ensemble tout de suite pour assurer que les résultats seront... Euh, acceptable pour tous les membres. Euh, nous n'avons pas beaucoup de temps euh, et les risques sont là. Donc, euh, je suis optimiste, mais il faut faire attention, c'est tout. Passons jamais au chat. Qui est responsable pour cette protectionniste que vous mentionnez Et pensez-vous que le Bali peut définir can define uh, your own uh, mandate in the sense that if it fails you have you'll have a very difficult task ahead of you, Thank you. well protectionism is uh, widespread i wouldn't concentrate it in any one or two or three uh, members of the wto i think we have to be watchful uh, anybody who has read the um, the reports that have been uh, coming out of the wto particularly those prepared for the g20 summits uh, we'll have a pretty good picture of what is happening in terms of protectionism across the globe. So um, I don't have much to say that would uh, add to what we have in those reports at this point in time. As far as Bali uh, being a, uh, an important marker, I have absolutely no doubt about that. Uh, if it is not uh, successful, it will make the road a lot more difficult uh, ahead. But that is not the end of the road either way. Um, I would be, um, uh, I would not be an alarmist in saying that if we don't have an outcome in Bali, that, that the whole process or the whole organization is, is hopeless. I think that uh, there is still a lot to do. Um, as far as I am concerned, I have four years to work with members and I will use every single day and minute uh, to try to make uh, advances and, and, and progress with them. Vous l'avez dit, il y avait plusieurs candidats. Selon vous, qu'est-ce qui a fait la différence Comment est-ce que vous avez réussi à vous imposer dans cette course pour la direction de l'OMC Ce n'était pas une imposition, hein. c'était une sélection. <rire> Donc je pense que le, le, le résultat était... Bon, ma candidature a été acceptée par la, une, plus, une grande euh, majorité de membres. Euh, ils sont situés dans tous les continents. Donc, dans, dans, dans les Amériques, dans les Amériques euh, l'Afrique, euh, l'Asie, euh, l'Europe, euh, c'était partout. Et non seulement euh, au niveau de géographie, c'était aussi au niveau de, de, de développement, des degrés de développement. Donc, euh, je pense que le, le, le plus important de ma candidature était la, la commonalité avec les intérêts de, de plusieurs régions, de plusieurs pays, de, 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 de différents niveaux de, de, de développement. Et je pense aussi la, il, 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 je pense que tous les membres euh, croient que je peux aider les négociations, je peux aider à, à construire les ponts qui sont nécessaires euh, pour faire marcher les négociations. 
C'est ça, je pense. Il n'y a pas beaucoup de mystère. Hein. C'est quelque chose de très simple, en fait. É Assis Moreira, Valor Econômico, São Paulo. Ambassador Azevedo, uh, you mentioned the, to broader the trade agenda. Uh, what kind of uh, subject do you think it's possible, uh, realistic, to uh, include a, a new trade agenda, for example, exchange rate? Well, the agenda cannot be pre-established or pre-limited. I don't think any a priori decisions would be um, um, healthy at this point in time. Um, the reality, the reality is that members haven't even had a conversation about what that trade agenda is, what that trade agenda should be. We have been so stuck in the negotiations for the last uh, three, four, five years that we haven't even discussed what we should be talking about. Uh, Exchange rates, of course, is one that has been raised. Uh, it is uh, now being discussed in, w in one of the working groups of the WTO. But there are a number of other issues which were mentioned as well. I heard uh, members uh, mentioning climate change. I heard others mentioning energy. I heard other others mentioning investments. I heard members mentioning a whole a host of issues. Uh, whether they are doable or not, whether they should be discussed or not, is something that we should be talking about. And I don't think that at this point in time anybody in the WTO under any format has even begun that kind of conversation. And that's what I think we should be doing um, as soon as we can. Um, Peter Kenny from the Wall Street Journal. There's a public perception that there's a discrepancy, and I think you've already mentioned this, between the global multilateral trading system and uh, regional blocks. As DG, how do you see that you can get these to work uh, to benefit one another rather than to be uh, working in different spheres to one another? Thank you. Well, uh, they, one should never expect uh, the multilateral negotiations and the bilateral or regional negotiations to attempt the same things or to attempt the same depth of negotiations. The multilateral negotiations are almost by definition uh, broader. They are by definition uh, um, 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 more meaningful in terms of outcomes, in terms of benefits that they, that they uh, uh, bring to the system. Why? Because they are immediately applicable to 159 countries, right? The, the, the difference, the big difference is it is virtually impossible to be uh, negotiating among 158 countries, testing the frontiers of trade liberalization, the frontiers of trade disciplines, the really most innovative trade disciplines that there can be. It's very difficult to do that. Normally what happens is uh, you, you have these uh, bilaterals, you have these regional agreements and initiatives testing these frontiers, testing what can be done a, 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 as deeply as possible in areas that haven't really been fully explored. To the extent that those negotiations bear fruit, to the extent that those results become more accepted by the international community uh, at large, then those rules, those disciplines begin to be incorporated into the multilateral uh, uh, system and begin to f be a part of the foundation on which these um, bilaterals and, multi and, and regional agreements uh, are built upon. So they complement each other. They don't uh, compete with each other. Thank you, John Zaracostas, for Condé Nast Publications in New York. Uh, Mr. Azevedo, in your new job starting September 1, <clears throat> do you have any ideas how to revive some issues that are so topical globally but stuck in time in the WTO? The issue of trade and environment, trade and labor. Uh, we're hearing threats of uh, trade sanctions in, in the aftermath of the accidents in Bangladesh and Pakistan. And thirdly, uh, you got a lot of support from Africa to get to the job where you're going. Will you have any initiative on cotton? Thank you. Well, like I 
I think I tried to, to, to point out before, um, that conversation has not even started. So it's very difficult now, uh, from this point on, without even having this conversation with members, to decide what is it that the, about the WTO could or should be looking at. Um, I think we should begin this conversation. I don't think we should have any I limitations. I think we should have an open uh, an open-ended uh, conversation about these issues, see how members feel, what sensitivities are, or which approaches could be taken. Um, one step at a time. I think first we have the conversation. Then we decide what to do. Um, as far as Africa, uh, cotton is clearly one of the issues uh, that uh, Africa is uh, very uh, mindful of. Uh, this is an issue which is already part of the WTO uh, discussions and conversations, so that's not a novelty. It's pretty much in there, and it, I don't think it's going to leave anytime soon. Uh, the question is, uh, is that the only one issue that Africa is interested in, and I don't think so. Africa is interested in a host of issues, uh, um, which part of them, for example, are going to be um, our part of the conversation that we are having for Bali. So with Africa, there is a lot of work to do. I don't think we should simplify it uh, in uh, uh, translating Africa's interest into one or two issues only. Thank you very much. I'm Gabriela Sotomayor from Mexican News Agency. First of all, congratulations. And then um, your appointment of the, as the future DG of WTO, what does it mean for Latin America? If you can talk about that, if you see more union between the countries. Thank you. I, I, I think it's more the opposite. It's not uh, what the system brings to Latin America. It's what Latin America brings to the system. Um, we, we are talking about um, um, a region which uh, is becoming more and more uh, influential in, um, in, in, in global trade. Is, is it participates um, more and more. Um, it is a, an active, has always been and is even more today than it was before, an active participant in the negotiations in Global Governance Forum. Uh, and I believe that uh, it is simply a natural consequence of that growing importance in terms of uh, trade and, uh, and participation in negotiations. Um, to the extent that we have more people working from Latin America in these negotiations, uh, to the extent that we have um, uh, more representatives doing that kind of job, that kind of work, uh, and engaging in all areas, um, it is more likely that um, Latin America becomes a region that will be more and more uh, putting forward candidates to uh, help and, and contribute to the governance of uh, the institutions, of the international institutions. And them being selection, uh, th them being selected uh, is not really a surprise. It's a, just a natural consequence of all that. Thank you. My name is Lu Xi and I'm from China's National Television. I would like to first uh, ask you to comment about China's role in the WTO and what's your vision for that role in the future. Secondly, um, your nomination has created some interest in China, but not that much. I guess it also may be because that people think that the WTO has been going down, that it has not been this in the spotlight, or it hasn't changed much. So what would you like to say right now? The camera is on you. You have the, the pahal in front of 1.3 billion Chinese people. What is the message you can tell them, <laughs> really, to make them interested in what you do in your job, and you have 30 seconds, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I was there before China joined the WTO. I'm there now that China has joined the WTO, and these are two different WTOs. And I think China is a big player. China is a big player in the organization. China is a big player outside the organization and has been contributing significantly in the negotiations and in everything that we do at the organization. Um, what, we, what we hope will happen is that uh, the organization regains its strength, regains its relevance, its importance, because that's the best way to ensure that China, as a very important global trading partner, 
uh, participates with uh, in a predictable system, uh, with uh, rules which are fair, which are equitable, and that allows all members to participate on equal footing. So in that sense, um, I hope that I have answered your question. I know I have not answered within 30 seconds. <laughs> Another 30 seconds. Well, look, what the WTO does, what we do here every day, every day, has an impact on the lives of every citizen across the world, whether they realize it or not. So to the extent that we keep the system healthy, to the extent that we keep the system operational, every single citizen of the world should have a stake and should be a stakeholder in the organization. All the 1 billion Chinese, 1.2, all of them have a stake in the organization. Views about the completion of the Doha round, do you see that as a lost cause or is this something that you would use your office to try to strive towards? Well, I, have, um, I hope I have made it quite clear over the last four months that that's my number one priority. The Doha round is my number one priority, not only because of the things which are in the round, which are extremely important, extremely important for what we do today in, in businesses in the world, but also because by solving the round, we, we would be unlocking the organization. We will be taking the organization away from this paralysis in which it finds itself over the last five years. So I'm absolutely sure that uh, all members of the organization would agree with me that we need to find a solution for the Doha round as quickly as we can. Tom Miles from Reuters. Um, aside from the negotiations uh, as the Director General, you will also be, uh, to some extent, the, um, the, the guardian and the conscience of the free trading system. And um, Mr. Lamy recently warned that um, the threat of protectionism may be greater now that any time since the start of the economic crisis, uh, other policies to restore growth have been tried and found wanting. So I'm wondering, um, will you, for example, go to the June G8 meeting and read them the Riot Act and, and warn them not to undertake protectionist measures? Is this something that you're going to uh, take up straight away? Um, any comments you can make on that? Thank you. Well, of course, the number one priority for the WTO as an organization is to promote trade liberalization is to promote liberalization in a way which promotes growth, which promotes, um, uh, uh, creates wealth and creates uh, better well-being and uh, social development in all countries. Um, I think it is a duty of the WTO DG and of the WTO as an organization to ensure that trade liberalization is its number one priority and that um, uh, fighting protectionism is, of course, uh, part of that priority. I don't think anybody has any doubts about that. Uh, that's what we have been doing, all 159 uh, members uh, throughout. They have different views about how to do it, but that's the nature of the organization. Um, as far as I am concerned, what I will make sure that happens is that we will not uh, stray away from that course. Ambassador Daniel Prusen with BNA. You will take office on September 1st. The Bali meeting will take place in the beginning of December. What realistically can you do in that time to help deliver in Bali? Um, a lot of people would argue that the cards will already be dealt by then, and there's not a whole lot you can do. And may I ask you, um, when you take office on September 1st, um, who would you make your first phone call to, or where would you make your first travel plans to in order to get this um, process moving? Would it be Mr. Froman in Washington? Would it be... Mr. Sharma in New Delhi, would it be Beijing, elsewhere? Well, uh, about September 1st, I, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell what state of negotiation we, w we will find the negotiations at uh, in, on September 1st. I think the job of the DG uh, will depend significantly on where we are on how members are still engaging on the state of negotiations at that point in time. 
the degree that he can help or cannot help will depend immensely on that. Um, a lot of things can happen between now and September. I'm hopeful that by the time that uh, the transition happens in September, we are still in a position to, um, to finalize uh, the negotiations. Um, it's difficult to tell the state of the patient at that point in time. I hope we'll still find a patient in September with a heartbeat and breathing uh, and not a flatline patient. Um, there's so much you can do with a flat line, so I hope that we'll still get a heartbeat by then. On the um, on the first call or, call or trip or the first call or trip, I don't know. You know. <laughs> September, <laughs> a lot of things will happen until September. I don't know. Um, I'm sure I'm going to call home and say how stressed I am. That's for sure, but other than that, I don't know. We have to see, we have to see. I'm sure I'll be getting a lot of calls if I don't call out, that's for sure. So thank you all very much for coming. Um, I hope we'll be seeing each other um, and that um, this will be a long but productive road. Thank you.